Hello everybody, Quadjet Power here. Uh, we're going to show you how to install a, our our basic kit for a refresh. This is a 7041211. Already ordered the uh, Quadjet Power custom rebuild kit, which comes with a float filter, um, all the hardware, all the soft components, and everything that we need uh, to do a refresh on on any Quadjet. It's our QB1 Easy Kit. It uh, can be ordered at quadrajetpower.com. So we're going to disassemble this carburetor. We're going to go through this pretty quick. Um, give you an idea of how to do um, a good refresh on your quadrajet. I'm going to start by disassembly. This one's obviously already cleaned. Um, cleaning is an uh, important part of everything. So we're going to Instead of all, all of our components over here as we take them off, <clears throat> we're going to use a 3 32nd punch to punch the roll pin back. So we can get the accelerator pump arm off so we can remove the air horn. It's got a little notch on it so it'll come off with the throttle arm. <clears throat> we need to remove the choke components here. This pull-off is attached with a pin, a pull-off rod. So we'll take the pin off. And we're going to slide off the pull-off itself. We'll check it later, make sure that it's good. Now we'll remove the choke components. This is a divorce choke quadrajet. We'll take the screw out of the side, then we'll pull off the, this is a fast idle cam, slides over the choke component, we're going to pull it off over here, pull off bracket, now we'll pull off the pin. So now the air horn is ready to remove, so we're going to take that off. We start by removing the two smaller inside screws in the primary choke area. I like to use a magnet to pull those out. Then we have the seven other hold down screws to hold the air horn down. Almost all of the divorce choke quadrajets are similar um, in the disassembly and the components. We we'll use this Chevrolet unit because it's common to a lot of the Chevrolet. So. This is just going to be a refresh. We're not going to go through the, a complete rebuild like we would normally do here, but a lot of people just want to refresh their quarter jet with a kit. Um, so this is what we're doing. Now we need to get the air horn off. Many times we'll pull it up here. We'll remove the air horn. Make sure that the pullover enrichment tubes are in place. The vent tubes are in place. Uh, everything. So we'll set the air horn aside. Take out the accelerator pump. Gonna remove their horn gasket, the old one. A lot of these are brittle and will break and come apart. Let's make sure that you get all the surfaces clean. We're gonna remove air horn gasket there. Accelerator pump spring, return spring, gonna pull that out. We'll have a new one. The float cover, gonna remove that. Next, we're going to, usually you can tap up and down on the power piston assembly to get the assembly loose. 
We're going to pull that out. Going to remove the float, the float pin, the needle for the needle in the seat was hooked onto the float. So we're going to remove that. Power piston spring came out with the power piston. This would be in the power piston piece, so the spring comes out to go underneath the power piston. Now we have the empty bowl. We're going to remove the needle and seat, the, the seat assembly itself. I use a old Zeus fastener piece that I've adapted to be able to get it wide enough and thin enough to easily take out the needle and seat assembly. There is a gasket underneath that is sometimes gets stuck here. You want to make sure that you remove this gasket under the seat assembly before you put a new one in so you don't have a, an issue with a leak there. So removing that. Jets are down there. We we'll typically remove those for cleaning. Uh, since this one's already clean, I'm going to leave them in. Uh, just for the purposes of this, so we can get through this pretty quickly. Uh, now everything is removed out of the bowl for the for the rebuild. I'm going to take out the fuel filter. This would be a one inch wrench to remove the inlet. These early. Everything before, from 71 and older, the filter sealed to the face of the quarter jet slides over the filter housing, and then we have the spring that goes behind the filter itself. So we're going to set all that aside. All that comes new in the kit. So now we're going to turn it over. Whoops, I forgot something. How about that? check ball screw. So we're going to remove the check ball screw. Retainer. Set it aside. In that orifice is the check ball itself. So we're going to turn it over and remove that check ball. Set it aside. Now we're going to remove the base. So we'll turn the quarter jet over. Typically, there's Phillips head screws holding the base onto the main body. Two, sometimes three. Early ones will have a third one in the center. Later style may have a third one up in the front. Move those. Now we'll remove the base. Usually a light wedge underneath. the main body ready for cleaning now we'll remove the throttle body gasket and that gives us the base left we have the three main components left now the base on a, on a standard kit rebuild there's nothing to do the base we would always put bushings in the primary shaft here uh, and completely disassemble this for cleaning for the purpose of this video for just the kit install we're not going to do that on this one we'll go through that in later later videos for you so now now that we've got the cleaned assembly ready to go back and reassemble this with the basic kit so the kit comes with all of the gasket components float uh, needle and seat assembly, 
complete accelerator pump uh, assembly with the springs, filter, all the components. So everything you need for a refresh is there. So once we get everything clean, the way we clean, we'll soak in a carburetor soaking solution, uh, usually overnight, give it a lot of time to break loose any of the loose uh, components and grease and grime that have accumulated over the years of use. Uh, we'll uh, soak it and then we'll go through an ultrasonic cleaning process after that. So it's a pretty lengthy process. We want to make sure that all the passages and components are clean. We would blow out through the main passages. Uh, we would also always remove the idle tubes and make sure that they're clean. Um, down channel restrictions, we'd blow air through there. The, the accelerator pump holes are here that pass through to the air horn. Blow through those to make sure all that's clean. The secondary passages here for the secondary well and jets are, are also blown through to make sure that there, all the passages there are clean. You can see here, even though most of the wells don't leak, the early ones, 65, 66, some 67s, Almost all leaks, so that gave Carter Jet a bad reputation. After a thorough cleaning, we'll use a Marine Tex epoxy uh, to seal over all of the well components and just to make sure that they don't ever leak. And that two part epoxy um, it's also available on our website. We sell that too. <clears throat> so now we're going to reassemble, put everything back together after it's been cleaned. So we're going to start with the main body upside down. We're going to add the throttle body gasket, the new one. It was in the kit. It's going to slide over. There are pins on most of the bodies. A lot of these have, have broken off through the years. Um, it's not a worry if they're broken off. You can still make sure that the gasket's in position properly. And now we're going to put the base back onto the main body. Once it's set in place and the pins are in place, we're gonna take those two Phillips head screws, put them back in here, and tighten them down. A lot of times I'll put a little bit of silicone lubricant in there just to make sure that they're smooth operating so we can make sure we get a good tight seal. I'm gonna firm those down good you want to make sure that you've got a good seal around the body. A lot of times we'll go into a darker room, shine a flashlight through here, make sure we don't see any light coming out anywhere between the body and the, and the base. So now we're ready to do the assembly of components back into the inside of the quarter jet. First thing we're going to do is put the check ball back into the check ball orifice. Check ball keeps gas in the accelerator pump system, keeps it, prevents it from back flowing so that you always get a good squirt when you use the accelerator pump. We're going to lightly tap on the check ball itself. We'd use the old one for this, the old check ball. Lightly tap on it just to make sure that it seats good. If it doesn't seat properly, then um, then you then you lose the accelerator pump ability. We're gonna add the check ball retainer back. I like to use a magnet on that, put it in place, and we're gonna tighten that down. Good and tight. Okay, now we're going to put the needle and seat assembly back in place. Make sure the gasket's there. Make sure the old gasket is gone. We're going to set this back into the threads. Make sure it's lined up properly. Now 
while that is tight. So we make sure that we've got a good seal there. Many times the float pin has been crushed down. We're gonna make sure we open it up just a little bit to make sure that it is, it's gonna hit against the air horn itself so it'll hold the float in place or we can have a flooding issue. So we're gonna put the float pin through the new float and it'll be from the passenger side coming across where the loop is over here so it'll sit in the cradle. We're gonna take the we're gonna take the clip off of the needle at this point. That clip is not necessary um, these days with today's fuels. Uh, most of the time we put them on there anyway. So we're gonna put the, the needle inside the seat. We're gonna put the float in place. And now we're gonna measure the float height. To do that, we're gonna hold the pin with one finger while we push the end of the float down so that the need is fully seated. And we're gonna make sure, we're gonna measure the float height at the end of the float from the main body itself and make sure that it's about 9 30 seconds of an inch from the top of the main body to the back part of the float. Once that's set properly, we're gonna pull the float back out, set it here, then we'll add the clip back onto the needle. Then when we're putting the clip onto the float, don't put it through these holes. I'm just gonna slip it over the center part of the main part of the float. We're gonna set that down so that everything's in place. Next thing we're gonna do after we've cleaned the primary rods, we've cleaned the power piston itself. We're gonna put the power piston return spring into the orifice there. And now we're gonna slide the power piston in place, making sure that the primary rods go inside the jets. And then we'll seat this all the way. And now we'll put the power piston retainer back in and push it in place so it locks and it'll hold the power piston retainer. We wanna make sure on the power piston itself that the arms for the power piston are level and everything is squared up there. Many times we see those, they're bent all kinds of shapes. So we're gonna make sure that they're straight and level so that it'll operate properly. We're gonna put the float retainer back in place so that it sits there, making sure the float pin is extending above it. That's fine, that's what we want. Gonna put the accelerator pump return spring. Again, this will be new. Put it in the accelerator pump hole. Usually a good idea. Squirt a little bit of silicone in there and make sure everything operates smooth when first getting started. Now we're gonna put the air horn gasket in place. Everything else is inside. The air horn gasket is cut here so that it can slide underneath the power piston and the primary rods. There are pins here, like on the bottom. Sometimes these will break off, but if they're here, I'm gonna make sure that the gasket goes over those and holds. It'll be pushed up a little bit here because of that float pin. That's not a worry. Now we're gonna put the accelerator pump through the hole, make sure that it operates smoothly. Doesn't have any issues there. Now we're ready to put back the air horn itself. So we'll take it once it's clean. We'll also always do a little resurface on this. These are almost always warped, but typically if the air horn is correct for the main body and they've been together for many years, they're warped together. So we're gonna verify later that, that we have a good seal but we'll resurface this lightly just to make sure we pull a little bit of the warp out of it, but 
uh, warping is typically not a problem at all. The pullover enrichment tubes are going to go into the into the the holes here. The uh, vent tubes are going to go in the other hole, so we're going to line it up to make sure that they're all in place. I don't know if you can see that, so let me open this up just a little bit. So once once those are in place, be ready to slide it down. Accelerator pump coming up through the hole. Now we're going to make sure that it sits properly in place. Now it's time to add back the screws. We're going to start with the two small screws inside, almost similar to how they were removed. So now we'll tighten these down. First thing we're going to do is just tighten these down a little bit. So if they're a little snug, then we'll tighten them completely. The next process. Typically use a power tool for this. Didn't want to annoy you with the power tool noise, so I'm going to hand do these this time. Always do the final tightening by hand. You can hear we've got a good air squirt, even though we don't have everything tight. It indicates we have a good seal throughout from the air horn to the main body. Now we'll just firm. Firm all of these screws. So everything's good and tight. Now we've got a good squirt, so everything's assembled. So now we're ready to go back and do the final assembly and all the other components. We're going to hook this pin into the accelerator pump arm. Take the accelerator pump lever. We're going to take our 332nd punch, line it up with the pin hole, and now we're going to take our flat blade screwdriver and push the pin back into place. Sure we've got smooth operation there. Now we're going to take the secondary rods. We've cleaned those. These are the originals. We've got the hanger. We're going to make sure that the hanger is level and that there's not one side higher than the other. We're going to that needs to make sure that they're level. And we're going to drop the secondary rods through the holes in the gasket and make sure that they set inside the secondary wells. I got lucky that time, slipped through pretty quickly and easily. I'm gonna take the screw, this screw is the same size as the throttle blade screws, and we do sell all the screws and all the parts, everything you need at quadrajetpower.com. So we'll tighten that down. 
we're going to operate the secondary air valves and make sure that it's lifting everything. we got smooth operation there if there's no, no issues with that. Next thing we're going to do, let's go back and put the choke components back on. We're going to slide the actuator down into the hole. Let's see if I can get a good, good view for you here. So we're going to drop the actuator down into the hole so we can see the actuator through the hole itself. And we're going to use our pin here so that we can get it in place and keep it in place while we hook the top part. into the hole for the choke. And now that the now the choke's ready to assemble, we've got the actuator in place there. We can hold it. We need to open up the throttle blade a little bit so that the fast idle doesn't interfere and it'll slide on easily. So with the choke with the throttle blades open a little bit, we're gonna make sure the fast idle cam is in position above the arm. Now we're going to slide, slide it over the actuator that's inside the main body. Once that's in place, we're going to check it here. Make sure we don't have a bind. It was a little stuck from the cleaning, so we're going to loosen it up a little bit here. Once it's all in place, we're going to make sure that everything moves as it should. Put the screw back in place here. So the fast idle cam ended up below the choke arm. So now I gotta pull it back loose. Like I said before, make sure the fast idle cam is above. Open up the throttle blades. back in place. Everything's as it should be. So now we'll tighten it back down. Shouldn't be any binding here. So now we'll close the throttle blades, make sure the throttle blades work correctly, make sure the choke is moving easily, and everything's as it should be. Now we're going to put a pin onto the rod. Use a pair of needle nose pliers. Slip the pin, the clip. And now with the throttle blade open, we're going to make sure that the choke assembly works smooth. With the choke up position, fast idle cam should be engaged. When we release, we're going to make sure everything drops. So. Now we're going to put the secondary pull-off rod back in place, along with the pull-off itself. We always replace these. We have them available in our store. 
back on. We also always include in the easy kit a new vacuum hose. I'll put that back in place. This one uses a clip, so we're gonna put the clip on the rod. We're gonna make sure the secondary air valve is open properly and all the way. If it needs to be adjusted a little bit to make sure the air valve is open, you can bend the rod a little bit. Make sure you get full opening. Up. Now with the choke valve closed, we're going to make sure that when the pull-off is fully opened, in this case, this arm is going to push down the choke piece. And we want to make sure that the air flap opens a little bit to allow air in while the choke is activated. That's properly adjusted, so we don't need to bend this this time. We would bend in this, for these 70, 71 pull-offs, we'd adjust this if needed to make sure we had that opening. So now everything's assembled. Final thing we're gonna do with the new gasket, the new fuel filter spring goes in first. New fuel filter, the opening of the filter with the gasket goes to the fuel filter housing so that it's open to the front. We've got our new gasket we're going to put on the face. Now we're going to install that. Got to be careful on the threads on these as the body, many of the bodies are decaying and the threads are become worn. We can do a helical if necessary to save those threads. We're going to make sure that it's threading easily. You don't want to force it or those threads will easily strip. Again, take our one inch wrench. We're going to tighten it down, make sure it's nice and tight so we get a good seal across there. And we'll also do a vacuum test to make sure that it doesn't leak. Um, make sure you don't have any fuel leaking out of the front. That's a quick overview how to install the Quarter Jet Power Quick Easy Kit. Comes with all the components that we talked about um, for this video. Um, again, cleaning is one of the most important things to do, so make sure that you soak it well, blow out all the all of the passages, and make sure everything's good and clean. This quarter jet now is ready to install, enjoy, and drive for years. Get quarterjetpower.com. If you need any parts, new or used, we, we have it all. Uh, we, can, we can fix you up with everything that you need. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, email us, info at quarterjetpower.com. Uh, quarterjetpower.com to order any parts, anything that you need. Thank you very much.